Shut up and sit down. What is going on, Dads? And welcome to episode 5 of the Dads After Dark show recorded on March 3rd, 2020. We are your hosts, Drew and John, and thank you for joining us tonight for some Nintendo and birthday cake. John, what's going on? Happy Switch birthday, the big 3 0. Um, what is it? What you, you, you've been having some celebrations. Oh my gosh, this, I will never forget the day that Switch came out because I asked my Alexa for like two months straight, how many days until March 3rd. I love, I like, this feels like a birthday for like a child. Like it's actually, <laughs> I think it's better than one of my kids' birthdays because they don't have to like, it's you know, up, but plan for their friends to come over or anything like that. But uh, happy, happy birthday, Switch. Uh, and we're going to be celebrating tonight. Did you buy your Switch a present? You know, maybe a little new Joy-Con or a new carrying case, screen protector. Yeah, I bought it a new game, so tonight uh, I'll get it inside. (laughs) But how how is that any different than every other week, John? (laughs) Well, digital games don't work like that. You have to be physical. So that's kind of like the porn, right? So, I mean, digital would be be, you have to resort to porn versus... The hard copy, no pun intended, would be, you know, you and the missus. Yeah, no, I'd say like the digital is like the like, you know, remember like USA Network when you're a kid when they had kind of like that, not even soft porn, but just sort of like, you know, this hint that there might be. But, you know, yeah, physical is like, physical like the you, real thing, a real card. Like, it's like when you watch Game of Thrones and in the intro that always said there will be nudity, you got pumped up. <laughs> Before the episode started, right? And <laughs> right, it wasn't. It wasn't like a warning. It was like an advertisement. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was, yes, I'm pumped up. Yes. Uh. <laughs> well, I mean, what have you? Uh, have you been? What have you? Speaking of, what have you? Uh, what have you been playing this 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 you week? Know, here? I've been playing a lot um, over the last couple of weeks. Um, besides monthly mayhem, which we'll we'll get to later in the show. I, I, I battle in there. Battle. Oh my God, we got to talk about that. We will. We'll get there. Um, I've been playing a lot of Pine um, for for well, why why was I playing Pine, John? Well, I think I dared you. I dared you to play Pine. I think you jokingly dared me, and then five minutes later, I sent you a screenshot, and you're like, "Oh shit, he he did it. He actually did it." <laughs> well, I I dared you to play Pine because you played it, but I want to let's save your story because I have a feeling I have a I have a feeling it's going to be hilarious. But yes, well, I I did. Before- before you get to your game, I want to hear a little bit more about this birthday party because I saw some pictures and stuff, and it looks pretty cool. I was kind of jealous that I'm not, you know, I don't live near you because I would have, I would have made the drive. Oh my god, you, so, you totally so, would have been invited. So, so give me like your top three big moments of this birthday party. Well, it's 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 more an experience, and it started uh, two years ago on the first birthday when we had gotten together and we sang to the, you know, we 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 sang happy birthday. And we um, we had so many people. It was like 20 people and everyone had their switch on the table and we sang. And so I shared the video on Reddit because I thought, hey, this will be fun. And mm-hmm. there were so many people that were like it was really the first time I heard the word cringy before. There were so many people that were like they thought we were a cult and it was so cringy. Everybody. And it was like, guys, lighten up. We're just having some fun singing well, around like. We're not singing to the Switch. We're just celebrating. We I, spent like hours two, playing two Switch games. There. I mean, one, it is a little cultish. Two, what's wrong with that? I'm kind of into that. Yeah. Fuck yeah, make the cult. Who gives a shit what they think? Well, yeah, and like like I said, three hours like before we did that, we were all just playing Switch games. So it's not like we got together to sing to our Switch. So well, you the, took that uh, to a whole new level this year. Oh well, I mean, we we took it to a new level last year. And then okay. this year, we actually scripted the video we were going to do. So that was like all scripted. And um, if you haven't seen this video, I mean, you can I've find a link it. to it in the Discord. Uh, but hey, uh, yeah, it involves marriage. We'll put it in the show notes. But it, it involves a marriage proposal 
um, and some some switch cosplay, I guess. I don't know what you would uh, you'd consider it. But yeah, we had the cake. And um, the thing I really love about these parties is that if you watch all the videos we've done, all three, mm-hmm. the switches have become more diverse in the first year. A lot of them were either gray or neon joy cons. Mm-hmm. And then the second year, I remember somebody put their NES classic controller on the table and you saw more colors, some of the yellows and all that. Mm-hmm. This year, like all Rainbow. of the switches look different. Yeah. Like there was not like this pattern. There was the Pokemon switches and, and the, the switch lights made their first appearance. So it's been fun to see the pictures as time goes on and like who knows what we'll see. And next year, I mean, we might only have a couple of birthdays left before the Switch is done. So uh, I'm really excited to see maybe a Switch Pro next year or something. So, uh, you know, I'm, uh, we have we had a blast. Uh, we played some we, we didn't get to 12 player Mario Kart, but we had 12 people. We just didn't have enough carts, more cartridges, you know. So uh, but man, we had such a fun time. So how many cartridges would you need to so do four per cart? Well, generally, we say bring your own switch and bring your own card or, you know, your own version of the game. Um, We had a few people that would share a screen. But even then, we just couldn't quite get to 12. Um, We only I my family, we only had uh, two copies of the game and there was five of us at the party. So that's kind of like where, you know, we we lost. Um, But the thing that was interesting, I was like, how come we only have two copies of Mario Kart? And it occurred to me that we didn't get our third switch for the kids until Splatoon came out. And Mario Kart came out before Splatoon, so we never had three copies of Mario Kart. Well, I, so that I was mean, kind John, of, uh, maybe my kids are younger. You could say I don't get it. But can't you just tell the kids, that's it, we're getting two. I mean, you don't need a third, do you? Well, if you want to have, uh, you know, me, the wifey, and, you know, the kids play together, you well, need three. You, but you put it up on the screen and you do four play split screen. No, that... you do oh. not do that. That drops the frame rate to 30. Uh oh. makes it way harder to see where you're How going. How is it, it any is, different is not... than playing handheld? What no, because you can see you have a full range of vision. I can do I can do side by side pretty well. Um, uh, but when you're doing competitive like tournament Mario Kart, I, I really want my own screen. But I can do two. But yeah, once you go to three at but a see, time, I, you get I, you, you can't do it. I, I mean, I don't disagree. I've been playing a lot of three because my my kids. But mm. at the same time, I'm playing 50 CC with them, and it's like I I don't. It doesn't really matter to me. You got to slow down for them anyway. Yeah. And really, oh. and really, actually, you can only do four on like local. You can't do online play with four. It only goes to two. So even then, you couldn't do it. Huh. All right. Well, but, it sounds like you had an absolute blast celebrating a a I don't even know what you call it a piece of hardware. Um, it's birthday party, but um, yeah, I mean, it sounds like it was a better birthday party than I throw for my kids. So I'm glad you had fun. I'm glad the Switch had fun. But you've been you you played through a game that would seem very intriguing to me. Um, so I, I know we haven't talked about it a lot, but I, I kind of want to hear about yeah. it because I um, it seems intriguing from the from the get go. Yeah, this was a game that I've been wanting to play for a while, and uh, some early reviews kind of dissuaded me a bit. But I played Minute, um, and and it was yeah, it was a game I wanted to get right away. Um, it's like a, it's the black and white game that some people compare to Legend of Zelda. And mm-hmm. the, the main quirk of the game is that you have 60 seconds and then at 60 seconds, you essentially die. Um, and whatever you were doing at the time, you die and you show up back at your house and then you go out again. I had seen a review saying that ah, it didn't live up to its potential and they could have done more interesting things and blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, about a month, month and a half ago or so, I picked up uh, the physical version um, I forgot who put it out or if it was limited run. I think it was limited run, but somebody was selling the physical version and it has a really cool cover. So I bought it and I was like, okay, I'm going to play it now that I own it. I'm going to play it. Mm-hmm. And I had a really good time. I, I, I highly recommend this game. This is a really fun time. I will say it's not so much like Zelda. It can look like Zelda the way you go from screen to screen. Mm-hmm. It actually feels more like the old like Sierra games, the old point and click games. Oh, I love those games. Like yeah. uh, Change Quest or Black Cauldron or all right. those. Good- oh, yeah. Exactly. It doesn't it doesn't play in terms of like you don't type, obviously, and you don't even really do point and click. But what it is is you're you're going around and then you know you pick up a water can and then you're gonna use that water can to open up this door and then you're gonna okay. you know, go in there. So it's like it's one of those games you have to figure out, okay, I found an item. What do I do with this item? And sometimes that's not so clear. And sometimes you have to guess. 
So they throw um, curveballs in there like, well, you don't need that item either. Uh, no, every item does have a use. Okay. Uh, but but as an example, um, you find a water can and you find it like it's just like those other games. You find it in some random spot and you're like, oh, it's a water can. So you have to kind of think, like, what could I use a water can for? So next to your house, there's like this little farm. So, you know, I, it's not obvious what to do, but like you, you have 60 seconds to play. So every time you die and then you start again from the beginning, you go, OK, what should I do with my 60 seconds? So this one time I said, I'm going to bring the water can to the farm and just spill it everywhere and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, in this one spot on the farm, a little like vine like pokes out and it's like, ooh, interesting. But then I can't figure out what to do. And then I die. So then, like, down the road, I mean, I spent most of the game not knowing what to do with that vine. Every so often, I'd water it again, but nothing happened. And then finally, yeah, one time I watered it, and a coin sprouted out. And I got a coin. So mm -hmm. it's it was a really so, fun game. So now when you get that coin, you don't lose that coin. It, you get that permanently. Every time you die, you, it comes back? Exactly. Everything in the game is permanent. So when you, like, obtain an item, because you're not really... Dying, they kind of say that this sword, um, it's kind of like uh, Link's Awakening. When you start the game, there is no timer. You walk around, you're kind of blocked off for most things, and you go to the um, the beach and you pick up a sword. So it's almost exactly like Link's Awakening. Okay. And once you pick up the sword, I think you sort of die, and then you appear in your house, and they they kind of refer to it as, oh, it's the cursed sword. So you so basically you have sixty seconds. So it's and like you die. it's like Ground Todd Day. Uh, no, because everything you pick up is permanent. It's really sort of like at, at the end of 60 seconds, they're just bringing Teleport you back. You. You yeah, they're you. bringing you back. And it's only interruptive because, you know, maybe you were in the middle of getting through a maze and then you have to start all over again. It's really not that bad. It can be annoying at times when you just want so to do something. Be, and you're, it should be you're a stuck. pretty small world, right? Because you can't get far in 60 seconds. Um, it's a pretty small world. There are some times where like you need to make it to a point and you really have to do it efficiently. You can't futz around. You have to like start your your sixty second playthrough, and get like right where you need to be. Um, but most of the time, yeah, you kind of like the the way I would happen is I explore around. You'd find an area, and you go, oh, that's interesting. And then you die, and you go, okay, I'm gonna go directly there and try to figure out this puzzle. And then maybe you can't even figure it out. And then you go do something else. And then later on, you're like, okay, there's got to be something on the screen. But every screen has something to do. There's always something to do. Um, and then there are other points where if you get to them, that's where you will respawn at the end of the 60 seconds. And eventually uh -huh. there's, I don't want to give away too much, but there's ways to get between them a little more quickly. So, uh, yeah. I mean, and, it's, and it, it sounds it's, fun. It sounds intriguing, but I feel like for me, it also would sound like I want to just throw the controller. No, no, no. It's not, it's not frustrating at all. Okay. Um, and it's not a long game either. I think I beat it in two hours. Um, I was actually, oh, wow. You know, when you're playing a game and you feel like, I think I'm getting to the end of this, and then you don't, and then you're like, oh, it's still going. This one was like, I don't, I think I'm getting to the end of this, but I doubt it, and then and then it was over, and the credits are rolling. But there's a lot of, like, you can keep going and finding more items. There's a completion bonus. Mm -hmm. um, try to find all the things, and it really is fun. You go to a screen, and you look around, and you go, is there anything I didn't do? And you try to figure it out. They have a second quest and a third quest. I was going to do both of those, but the second quest is so hard because it drops down to 40 seconds. Oh, and Lord. the game is the same almost, but they change the location of things. Mm -hmm. And it is much, much harder. Your sword is not as powerful. I had a really hard time just doing anything. And that's when I got way more frustrated. And I kind of stopped. And I actually went back to my first save and tried to do more like of 100% completion of the game. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't get to 100% before I stopped, but I did play it for a while. Um, really, I just had a fun time. I, I love those old games, and, and I, I, I recommend it. I would buy it digitally. The physical version, I think, is 40. About, it's, 40 bucks for a two-hour game? No, it's well, that's the physical version. You're paying for the chip and all that stuff. It's a oh. really nice-looking game, and it's, it's, it's pretty rare. Um, but if you buy it digitally, I think it was like $8.00. Um, I definitely recommend it, especially oh. if you love those old games. And especially if you want to do the second and third quests, um, you know, that that that's going to extend that game to 10 to 15 hours. How, so. how do they get away with that? An $8 to a $40 game? I, well, you have this whole value thing, and I don't subscribe to your theory. No. I think if, if a game is a fun experience, 
it doesn't matter how many hours it is. I played a game, uh, the review for Nintendo Dad's Brothers, and that game was like three hours. But man, that was a great experience. It's it's worth it. Sure. I mean, if it was like two hours and it was sixty dollars. But this game, I think, was like twenty twenty dollars. I'm I'm looking at it right now. Ten dollars digital dollars. Yeah. I mean, I think that's worth it. And you can like I said, you can play it 10 to 15 hours. I mean, you got to go into it. It looks like Game Boy graphics. Yeah, but we love that. It's retro graphics. That's what we want. It is, and I will say, if you look up the developer for the game, it's not even a company. It's like these four people, and they're just named developer specifically. It's digital. they they might not ever make a game, or maybe they'll form a company. But um, I really liked it. So, um, but but enough about minute. Let's hear about Pine. And I'll start off by saying yes. This was a game that you were actually really looking forward to for a I long was. time. It kept getting delayed and it looked horrible. You skipped it and now I dared you to play it. So now that you finally played it, hmm. tell me. What's uh, it like? I mean, where do I start? So so Pine is a game that was originally um, developed by five graduate students as a class project. And um it ended up they they turned into hiring two other developers and they seven people made the entire game. So with that in mind, I was impressed. Um, but maybe I shouldn't have been. So my first reaction, John, I, I downloaded the game. I set it up. I'm ready to play. And this happens every time you play the game. The first loading screen takes about four to five minutes. No exaggeration. Oh, it, my 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 screen turned off. It went to sleep. <laughs> um, I, I meant to time it today, and I, and I forgot. But I, I honestly have to, no exaggeration, four to five minutes. Um, I know that it's for a fact about that time. It's ridiculous. Um, so, like, it's literally set it up, push start, and then, like, go make a cup of coffee or something. And then you come back, you should be good to go. Uh, so that, that's my, that was not a good, good initial impression. Um, so, so I start the game, right? So the game's intriguing in, in, in a few ways. Um, the, the story coming off of the Witcher, right? Which was so dia- dialogue heavy. I liked this game that it did have a connection of a story. Um, the dialogue was short and to the point, but there was, there was some there. And even in like the, the intro and the prelude, it, it was it was good enough to kind of tell you to introduce to you the basics on how to do with the tutorial. It was good, so I, I liked that portion of it. Uh, the prelude is maybe a half hour to an hour, if that. And um, I'm not going to give give a ton away, but I kind of like the story where you're you're this village tribe, right? Um, and you live up on the cliffs, and um, you you're trying to go to the go to a cave, and you, you're trying to learn about. Um, about you know the past and 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 of your culture a little bit so it, it kind of gives that cool little background story which which makes the main character and his brother um uh, kind of like open up the door and treat his brother's always like uh the rebel like we gotta do more we gotta explore we gotta do this where he's more of a reserved character it was like no no we can't do that um you know we gotta stay by the tribe we gotta do what they say um so something happens something happens at the end of the prelude and i'm not gonna tell you what it was because i don't want to spoil but something happens that then you know, takes you outside of the cliffs to go do exploring um, in, in this in this world, right? And it is very Breath of the Wild-ish, kind of, you know, cell-shaded-ish kind of, but it, it, it's the map, you have the same map where it's all foggy, and as you explore, it opens up the area that you can see. And it's a decent-sized map, to be honest. Um, but here's some good things that I liked. Um, it has very, like, tight controls, so... The, you know, you push the button, it, it adds pretty quickly. Um, it feels good controlling it. Um, however, I will say a con to the controls are very odd choice, John, with, with the configuration of the buttons. So B is your sprint button, right? Mm-hmm. And you know that in B is your sprint and Y is your jump. So, no, X is your jump, right? So, you know that in any type of 3D game, you want to sprint and you also want to turn the camera angle. Mm-hmm. It's almost impossible if you're holding down the B button with your right thumb, how are you supposed to control the right joystick? 
Right. You can't. You you need to have like an L and R button to be sprinting. Right. Exactly. So you cannot sprint and view the landscape. They don't let you change the controls at all. No, you cannot change the button configuration. Yeah, anywhere that's a, like. yeah, that's a big thing because usually, like, you use like a shoulder. I mean, that's what shoulder buttons are for. For you know, kind of giving you that that third yep. or fourth level of control there. Yep. And especially when you have four shoulder buttons, right? So, right. so what they have is the the left shoulder button would be for aiming your slingshot or bow and arrow, or if you have your melee weapons on, it's your shield, and your right one would be you know shooting or hitting with your sword or weapon. Yeah. So that that makes sense, but it, first problem right there, it's a big world. You want to run around. Imagine telling someone in Breath of the Wild you can't sprint and control the camera. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like if they had seven people make the game that they didn't have anybody, like, playtesting the game. But it's so... weird because they went into the details enough to, like, critical headshots. So if yeah. you hit something in the in, in the head with, like, a bow, it, it's a critical headshot. So there's little details like that that I'm like, okay, like, they thought about that, but they didn't think about running and, and viewing your, your landscape. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so well, well, you know, I want to yeah. know, I want to know about the graphics um because that the game like the thing that stands out to me when i watch trailers of it is how mm -hmm. horrible it looks how glitchy it is well, i'm gonna be transparent with you you know <laughs> i i never cared deeply about how games look i mean especially going to play the witcher 3 to this i mean the witcher 3 looked amazing don't get me wrong i it, it, it's it's enjoyable but i'll take a good game like look at minute that you just played obviously you didn't play minute for the graphics um, but the game does I, have. I like issues. retro graphics, Mister. Well, I, me too. I'm just saying, there was issues with. Um, I think I sent you a screenshot. I was standing on a cliff and I was like overlooking the overworld, and it was like a half of a pine tree sticking out, like <laughs> like a, a mountain that pretty much just had three lines that was like a plateau, <laughs> and then the rest of it was like cloudy and foggy, but you couldn't really see anything. You, so you Wait, you sent me that screenshot, and like, but you didn't give me any context. So yeah. I was looking at it going, does he think this is beautiful, or is he showing <laughs> it to me because it's horrible? Like, I don't know what to say. It was bad. Um, <laughs> so as far as that type of stuff goes, though, there's a lot of issues with that. So there was definitely type of like glitching a little bit when you're running and something was trying to load hundred percent. That happens. Um, it gets to the point. It's as bad as like, if I'm fighting a guy and another guy comes over, it's like a second guy enters the battle. I'll hit a guy with my sword and then no, no exaggeration. Two to three seconds later, I hear the clash of my sword. Like there's a <laughs> delay in the sound. Um, when it, it, it has, um, I got, you know, a, a full 24 hour sunset in schedule when it's nighttime, it's dark. Like it's very dark. It's hard to see sometimes when I'm running. Um, there's delays in the menu. So if I hit, um, pause, it actually takes about four seconds or five seconds, maybe seven seconds to load the menu, which is weird. Oh, um, my God. When I hit minus, which goes to the map screen, there's times where you see your character actually open up a map and he's looking at it on the screen, but the map doesn't open. So I have to hit minus again to close it and then try again, and hopefully the map screen opens up. <laughs> um, I wonder if that's like a porting issue or something. I'd love to know. I think the game looks a little better on some other yep. uh, consoles, but... Hey, um, so so let me just get to some of the uh, the other point of it. So I want to get a little bit to what what I played and what I actually did. That that's all the kind of the technical aspect of it. But um, so this is where it's gonna get fun. The the, the game concept because I went into this game kind of not knowing anything, right? Because I never really told you much. The game concept is actually kind of cool and unique, right? You live in these cliffs. Um, you don't really communicate with anybody on the on the lower world, right? It's 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 again not really spoiler, but it's like. Nobody exists. The only people that are important are in our cliff. Um, and like I said, something happens that triggers you to now have to explore the world. So there's these, these different races or different tribes, I guess you want to call them. And they're all different, unique character styles. The character designs are actually pretty cool. I kind of like them. Um, and when you get to these other villages, right, they have this donation box outside of the village. And you have to donate goods. And the goods are found across the entire world. Each kind of region has different types of stuff. You know, you pick up wood, you can pick up mushrooms, you can anything. And then you have crafting that you can you can do as well. So you might combine two to get a certain item. 
Well, what you have to do is you have to put these certain items into a box um, outside of the village. You're donating goods to the village. And the more you donate, you you move your alliance with them. So it's you. it starts as you're an enemy, and then it becomes neutral, and then it becomes you're an alliance. So everybody starts as an enemy, and what happens if you try to enter the village, you know, if you want to go... They're just going to start attacking you instantly. Um, if you're if you're neutral, you can walk into the village, you can talk to them, but they won't really do anything. You can go to the trader, they won't trade with you. Um, they don't really say much. You can't really talk to the leader, right? Because every village has like a leader that sits on like a throne. There's a trader. There's knights that protect um, the leader. Um, there's there's gatherers. So there's gatherers that go out and gather other materials throughout the world. So every village has that. And then there's there's the last phase, which is an alliance. So once you donate enough goods, you're now in an alliance with that village. So I found like maybe five different tribes. Um, so I was just kind of donating a little bit here and there. I said, hey, F this. I need to just focus on one tribe. I need to become best pals with these guys. John, when I tell you I donated like fucking 250 goods and I still <laughs> was an alliance member. I'm like, oh, my God, it's going up. <laughs> It's like barely moving. Um, finally, after like five hours of playing, I became an alliance member with these moose looking people. Um, I was like, fuck yeah, awesome. What does this mean? This is going to like progress my story because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I, I don't know what my mission is. Mm-hmm, I don't right. know. There's just tribes located in the world. So I was like, great, let me go talk to these guys. I finally did it. Nothing, John. Nothing. I didn't even know what was going on. One guy said, go talk to this guy and give him some orbs and he'll increase your storage, which is another fucking issue because you can carry about 12 things. Um, so I, I did that. I, I, I upgraded. There's these orbs that can be found throughout the world. Think of them like seeds or whatnot in, in Breath of the Wild. And you can donate them to this guy. He makes your pouch bigger. Um, so I said, OK, great. So now I have this other mission where I had to go collect all these um these things and this this is where I'll, I'll, i'm my last part of this quest story and i'll be done so i had a quest i had to go collect um gathering tokens guard tokens and trader tokens so i was like i don't know fuck how to get these things and i was like awesome i already have trader tokens and i already have gatherer tokens so i had to look it up i'm not gonna lie i googled it how do i get a guard token you have to kill one of the guards in a village that's how you do it I said, oh, man, when I go to attack these villages, I get attacked by like 100 people. They kick my ass. So the fighting mechanics are very hard. So I go into one village and I start like kiting. I start pulling them out with my bow and arrow. John, I fucking killed the entire village. I killed every (laughs) one of them. I murdered them. All of them, right? What happens? I kill the leader at the end. Every single building just burns to the ground and it's like it never existed. I read a post. It's like, oh, looks like this used to be a village, but it no longer is. And did I get my token? No, I fucking didn't, John. I did not get my token. So I was just, oh, my God. So actually, I did the play for an hour before the show. And um, I said, I'm going to go kill another village. I'm going to take out every village in this whole game. There's going to be no villages left. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I, I killed this village, and I got my token. So I'm probably about, I don't know, eight hours into the game. And I think I've completed one quest. Um <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. I like the idea, the concept. At the same time, it's fucking terrible. I, am I going to keep I playing? A- absolutely. Uh, I, I know I've I, probably taught a while, but... Uh, I mean, yeah. as you go through it, I, I'm like... You, you, every so often, you actually compliment it. Like, oh, I like the, the look of it. Or, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I want to keep going or something like that. But I feel like it's like Stockholm Syndrome. Like, you paid money for this because you're a sucker. And like, maybe you're just trying to convince yourself it's not all that bad, but like, it, I mean, like I can't stand, I played the Witcher for like an hour and like just a little jitteriness in the cutscenes was enough to like turn me off. But like, I can't imagine waiting four minutes to even start playing the game. <laughs> and I can't, I mean, I've seen like you die and then that has to like reload and it takes forever and just all the glitching and Oh, it sounds it sounds that. like these seven people that made the game sat in a group chat and were like, how can we lengthen this game? You know, and like, let's say let's let's make it so that progression's really slow or let's make it mm-hmm. so that, you know, they have a, a, a 
crazy small amount of inventory and make them earn it one item at a time. And they don't realize possibly, yeah, that's I'm just possibly not dropping items and picking up different items and trying to exchange. But there will one pain in the ass was I got to this island where I was trying to kill some village guys and I died and it spawned me across a like a valley to another island like they have spawn points apparently and i think they're just saved locations like they must probably have let's say 30 spawn points throughout the game so no matter where i die it puts you there so Mm -hmm. it took me again like 10 minutes to get back to where i was was like f this like that blows but um yeah that was uh that was like what killed me in hollow knight but at least that was a good game (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, at the end of the day, I better keep playing. Um, do I regret my twenty five dollar purchase? Was that no. was, that was twenty five dollars? Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. You should be. You should be. And how's <laughs> you didn't play my game, John? I uh, you recommended what? Well, maybe 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 next time. I I, I okay. got addicted to Into the Breach, and you know you you didn't have a game to play, so I made you play Pine. But I was sucked into Into the Breach. And like I said, I was like, I'm not stopping playing Into the Breach to play this this shitty game that you uh, recommended. <laughs> but maybe I will, uh, you know, I'll let you enjoy uh, me playing a crap game for once. But um, yeah, I'm not. And I just started probably the better than Pine. It, it's probably better than Pine. So uh, yeah, but at least he got to it. Um, I think Drew, it is time to celebrate birthdays by having a little discussion about the history of the Switch. Shall we begin? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do this. Here it comes! <laughs> you must save her, my daughter. So March 3rd, 2017, the Nintendo Switch was born. Um, and I'd like to go through the history of it and our like our favorite moments. And and like these aren't even like the best games or anything like that. These are just those moments that you'll never forget, no matter how tiny they are. Um, but everything starts not on March 3rd, starts October 20th mm. on 2016. So what mm-hmm. happened on October 20th, 2016? That was when we got the announcement of the Switch. Up until that point, we had referred... Do you remember what the name of the Switch was before the yeah, Switch? I do. I believe it was NX. And, and and one of the reasons I know that, which is funny, because around that time at my work, we were switching um, CAD ah. softwares, and the name of the CAD software was NX. And you were switching it. So, yeah, <laughs> switching it up. So October 20th, was when Nintendo was going to put out the reveal trailer. And this wasn't even a live um, event. This was, they just posted it on YouTube. Um, and I don't know what your memories of that. If you remember this video, this is the video with the really weird music. And they showed the guy who was like playing um, Skyrim. I loved it. Or I was, loved the video. Yeah. He was playing, I, thought, I can't remember, he was playing Breath of the Wild yeah. and Skyrim. Um, yep. But I, I re- my memory of this video was... We had to go to um, one of our kids, uh, you know, uh, parent teacher conferences. And so we were in the car when the video was released and I had Michelle driving and I was like reloading YouTube, reloading YouTube. And of course, you know, I didn't get the full like announcement experience because it comes up and it says Nintendo Switch. And I'm like, that's a really weird name. I don't think I like it. But uh, what what are you what do you remember about this video? And uh, what's your what, what where were you when you saw it? Um, you know, John, I don't know where the fuck I was, but I, I do remember that I, I, I loved it because a few reasons. I thought the video did an amazing job of explaining what the hardware was, right? I think it's a phenomenal mm-hmm. job. Told a story. And not to take away from the switch here for a moment, but I loved the idea because I'm one of the few that loved the Wii U. Believe it or not, um, the Wii U may not have been the best graphically or best software games. But I love the Wii U because it fits my lifestyle, which same as the Switch does. In a right. way, what I mean by that is um, I, I love the fact 
I don't I don't play a ton of video games, right? But what now that I can play video games off of the TV, it's huge for me. And as as a, a 3DS and a DS and all that stuff, it was always hard for me because it's like I don't want to start a new game in my 3DS because I I don't have a lot of video game time. So when I want to play on the TV or the 3DS, it's like I I don't want to do two separate games. I want to do one. So the Wii U did that for me. When I saw this announcement trailer, I was like, oh my god, it's everything that I ever wanted in a Wii U is now what they're calling a Switch. You know, I didn't really care about like uh, you know taking the Joy Cons off and all of that. Cool, but it, it it didn't really matter to me. I just loved the idea of what the Wii U did. But now I can take this Switch and I can go play it while I'm on the shitter, which I couldn't do on the Wii U. So hey. that I was pumped for. Um, and that was one of my moments. I, I remember the first moment I got to play the Switch on the shitter. That's that's a big moment for me, John, because the Wii U didn't let me do that. Right. I, yeah, I'm sure it was a big moment for you. I probably uh, really stuffed you back up. But, uh, I, you know, I, my first impression, actually, and I and I was a Nintendo fan at the time, and I did love the Wii U. Um, when I saw the video, I, saw the, I left a little disappointed, actually. I, one really? of the things that turned me off, yeah, the the pulling off of the Joy-Cons and just seeing all the, the little pieces and mm-hmm. just imagining, like, how flimsy they might be. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I was still... You know, used to a console being a solid piece of, you know, plastic or whatever that you kept nice and clean. And I'm thinking like, oh, you got to take these little pieces off. And then there's this little kickstand. And I don't know, I I wasn't sold on it. The color was gray. I was kind of hoping for something more colorful. And, you know, but then they showed the neon. Um, Mm -hmm. They showed some of the games, the music I really didn't like. Um, I didn't get super excited for the new Mario at the time. It didn't hit me because they just didn't show enough. I know... I was really excited that Skyrim was on it because I hadn't played Skyrim before. Oh, I and mean, shit, John, you're just saying all negative stuff. What, no, what? I mean, no, it was, but it, yeah. I'll be honest, it was, I, it, it, it I, I, there was something about it that just kind of bugged me. So, I was excited. I was excited that Skyrim was on it. I hadn't played it, but I was excited because I was like, oh, third party support is coming. And then we saw NBA true. 2K. Yep. And that was like the most exciting thing to me was like, look at all this third party software. And that was definitely an essential part of that video. Um, but I mean, I watched the video like a million times. So um, but so, yeah, it left me a little. Eh, I'm not sure so, if so I like what, this. At what point in the, the Switch pregnancy, let's call it, let's call it that, before mm. March 3rd. Uh, yeah. What point of the switch pregnancy, or was it not until it was after it was born, did you say, "Yep, I'm all on board for this shit. I'm gonna oh. be throwing it birthday parties. I'm gonna be <laughs> inserting my cartridge into the hole. All of the like, which point were you like sold? Yes, and that so that date was January twelfth, twenty seventeen, and you really got um, that's shit actually. That's that's that is actually my daughter's birthday. And I remember thinking, like, I'm more excited for this. That was when <laughs> Nintendo was doing their, uh, their Nintendo Switch presentation because they said more information's coming soon. So January 12th, they did this. This was done in Japan. If you remember, it was on a stage and it was Japan. It was all Japanese and it was like an hour. It wasn't a direct, but it was like a presentation. Mm-hmm. And you'll remember this is the one they actually showed arms um, do you remember the arms reveal from this presentation? Uh, I do. Okay, because it, it it should be burned into your brain. We saw these two people. It was like an, an older man, not an older man, but like, you know, a, a normal man. And then there was like a younger girl and they're walking towards each other and it's a little bit threatening. And you're like, what is this? What is it? At this point, we didn't know what was going on. I think and... she was going to rape her or something? No, they, but just like that, we were like, what is this? There was a lot of drama. It was like they were really extending it. And then like their arms one by one turn into these like spring arms. And then they start punching each other. And you still had no idea what was going on. And then they kind of like, droop, they kind of turned into the arms characters. And then they started showing the arms um, game. And that... I think that was the moment where I turned on the switch and was like, oh, baby, because this was like classic Nintendo. Um, I don't want to say gimmicky, but that Nintendo charm that they're so good at. This is something different. This is something weird. They're using the Joy-Cons to fight each other. And it's like, whoa, like this looks so much fun. Um, that was the moment. I don't remember what part. I think it was like towards the beginning of the presentation. Um, what did you think about the arms reveal when you saw it? Eh. I, yeah, are you, oh, you weren't into it? 
never even played it. I'll be honest. I don't even own it. So, so here's my problem is like, I, like I just said a little bit earlier, I, the, the, the joy cons, they're cool. I like how you can kind of make it so you can customize your switch. But to me, it's a $70 color accessory because how often do I take my joy cons off and play? Um, when I play Mario party, I don't have a choice, but besides that, probably never. So yeah, but, that, that, but that I, is, that's personal to you and how you play, right? You play, what is, but that's what this is about. So, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I think the Wii U kind of like got me out of the motion control system, right? In a way. And I, I was kind of not looking bad. So I, I love the switch for the portability, not for the 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 word switch where you can you know switch yeah. your voice, right? Yeah. So to me, it was never about that, and it still is never about that. So to me, that game was about that, which is fine. I get it. They're selling their they're selling their hardware. They're selling their feature, mm-hmm. but um, that 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 wasn't for me. So I I didn't really didn't really interest me well i think i think they the first thing they revealed was one two switch um i think they showed that off that obviously looked interesting and fun but everyone was kind of like what is that is it going to be more like we sports what's it going to be i remember a lot of people were excited for one two switch i was pretty hyped for one two switch um it's a great it's one of those games to show off you know your switch to friends and play um, and then obviously like the first day it came out and I was like, okay, this is, this is kind of fun. But then, you know, you didn't really play it anymore. Um, I think they started with one, two switch. They did arms. And then of course the end of that is the breath of the wild trailer. They ended the whole conference on this. They literally ended it. Um, they showed breath of the wild. It was like three, three and a half minute trailer to this day, Drew, I regard it as the greatest video game trailer ever made. That I still Whoa. watch it about once a week. Um, it was the greatest trailer. You watch and, that trailer once a week. I watch it once a week. If you watch it again, I mean, give it another watch. You watch it, they show a lot of the game, and then like halfway through, there's this just, they, they go into the classic Legend of Zelda music with the orchestra, and oh my God, you're just... I, I die every time watching it. I get goosebumps. I, it tears me up. It's amazing. And they, they definitely did things with the trailer that was a bit misleading. Like, that music really isn't in the game. Um, yeah. And the game is a more of a passive, calm experience most of the time. But the, the music is so good. And then that's when they end it. And then they, like, they say, you know, Link, wake up. You know, open your eyes. And then they show the March 3rd date as the release date for Legend of, mm-hmm. uh, for Breath of the Wild, which we knew was the release date for the Switch. Because at that point, if you remember, there was a lot of question about when is it going to come out? Is it going to be delayed or is it going to be ready for the Switch? And so when they hit March 3rd, I mean, the the reaction videos of it is just people just going insane knowing that this game is going to be available on day one. And that's still like an amazing moment um, and I think a big reason for the Switch's success was that it was available on launch. Um, but yeah, you should watch that trailer again. Have you watched uh, that trailer oh, in the last three years? I'm watching it right now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta like put the headphones on, and uh, man, you gotta feel that one. It, it is no, one of the great, the great trailers. It is. Uh, I, I, I mean, and, and I think to the point though, like you said, once I saw that game, I'm like. I, I don't need arms. I don't need one to use switch. I want Zelda. And I know that's going to consume over a hundred hours. And for me, over a hundred hours is going to be, you know, two to three months of a video game, because, you know, so that I was okay with here that. Comes the, here comes the Drew value algorithm again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a business guy. Great. I'm a number guy. Uh, uh, no, but I'll, I'll I mean, say that, that moment, you know, blots out every other, you know, moment right i mean the first three months that's that's it that's all i cared about that's what everybody seemed to um one last detail about that trailer if you ever i mean if you if you love that trailer um this is for everybody but if you love the breath of the wild trailer find the japanese version of that trailer um it has the japanese um original uh talk uh zelda's cry is much better in the japanese version very different um the the english voice actress it's a much more subdued cry. 
Um, mm-hmm. The Japanese is like a whale. Um, so make sure you watch both versions of that trailer. So sure. now here's what I want to do, Drew. So March 3rd, um, talk a little bit about when the Switch comes out. Um, how did you get it? When did you get it? And what were your first experiences with the Switch? What was it like? You know, uh, what did you play first? What, you know, mm-hmm. what, how did you feel when you played it for the first time? Yeah, so I mean, I, 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 um, I went on my launch break. Um, I think I went to a, a GameStop to get it. Nah, I did. I, I went on my launch break. I, you know, for some reason, I did have it pre ordered. I think they fucked up my pre order. And they only had because I, I had to do on my lunch break, right? I didn't do it at 10 a.m. when it opened. Mm-hmm. I went, you know, 12 o'clock ish. And I think they sold my my neon Joy Cons. <laughs> and to them, it's like, oh yeah, no big deal. Yeah, you, you didn't have the gray one. I was like, I don't want the fucking gray one. Fuck you. I want my neon one that I pre ordered? Right. Uh, so like, well, we don't have any more. I said, well, I don't fucking care. Figure it out. They're like, oh well, uh, you know the 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 store, you know. 15 miles over there has it. I was like, well, I can't go there now on my lunch break. Can't go 15 miles out of my way. You go call the store, tell them I'm coming at four o'clock and they better have my fucking system. (laughs) And they did. So that's, that was, that was my original reaction. It's Um, a magical moment for Drew. It was. And and you know what it is though? You're, you're right with the breath of the wild and, and just the, the value of the, what's the impact of it. Right. So, of course, you're going to get the collector's edition, and you have this massive bar- box, right? Oh, it was huge. huge. Bigger than the system. It's bigger than the Switch bots. Yeah. Um, so that right there is like, whoa, Like I feel powerful. You know, like, I feel <laughs> feel great. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, when you open up the, 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 the system and you're, you're looking at this hardware now that, again, you only have to compare it to uh, really the Wii U, right? Which, which is just more of a bulky, big... And then, you know, the Joy-Cons, and you're like, oh, this this doesn't feel as flimsy as I thought, and it feels great, and it looks great, and, yeah. uh, you know, you're setting it up, and the whole thing. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely, like you said, you put on the title screen, and you, you see the game, and it's like, you know it's something special, and you know you're going to go invest all this time, and you're experiencing this something that you love and you're so familiar with, yet you're so unfamiliar with at the same time. Um so yeah, th- that was my original moment of Breath of the Wild, and I loved being able to hear other people play through it and live through it. And um, absolutely, yeah, it, it, it will be a moment of a video game that I'll yeah definitely always remember. But um, what about you? Yeah, I I uh, so my first moments I I had pre ordered the Switch at uh, GameStop. And, you know, it was really hard to get a pre order in. But I remember the day they started pre orders, I went to wait in line at GameStop. Um, didn't have a problem. I, I was talking to some some other guy on on the line. And then between uh, the pre-order and the pickup, um, I managed to get another pre-order in so that my wife would have her own Switch. Because back then, I used to play games on the Wii U. Like, you know, we'd play, like, Paper Mario. Mm-hmm. And Michelle would be kind of like my, my wingman, right? Yeah, so I'd she would, like, with my you know, wife. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And... You know, so we were going to get one switch and then and then and then we were like, oh, let's get a second one. So, yeah. So we ended up getting a second pre-order from Best Buy. But, um, yeah, I'd never done a midnight opening before. And it's about 11 o'clock at night on uh, the second there. I, I went over to GameStop. I was a little nervous about it. I kept I was really nervous about like there being a robbery or something. I'm thinking all these consoles really? are out there and. I've never really done a midnight you never release. Did a, so. You never did a midnight release no. or anything? No, See, no I did because for the Wii I did. Time, yeah, up until that time, I was never super obsessed with video games. I played video games, but I didn't have a system that because so I had kids. Minute. The John Zablock that I know. Your t- time out here. Tell me. Wait a minute. We got This is big. This is huge. We'll you're get to it, me, Drew. <laughs> you're telling me that three years ago, or let's say four years ago, you were not as big of a video game nerd that you are like today. I. I had lots of video games, but as I had three kids and, you know, you're when you're playing games at on a TV, you don't mm-hmm. always get that time. And at night we tend to go upstairs and play some Netflix and whatever. Um, so, yeah, no, I didn't <laughs> play a lot of I games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I, you know, I didn't play a lot of games, but but yeah. So, I mean, I didn't really do the midnight releases. We just, you know, bought the console or whatever. But, yeah, wow. I went out. I went out to GameStop and, um, you know, they had a little party and I, so, and I, so I, what, 
so uh, and, and I don't want to. I'm sorry. I don't want to steal from your your story then. But but this is this is this is kind of the same part. What was it about the switch then that really made you say, um, yeah, this is going to be the one. I'm I'm all in. You know what I'm saying? Like what what if if you were never that like deep into and you don't get me wrong, you're a video gamer. I get it. But what was like? I'm going for the midnight release. I'm buying two of these. I'm buying I'm buying Breath of the Wild. I'm buying shit. I'm buying Breath of the Wild on the Wii U because I know you did your your piece of shit. You bought it for both systems. So so what what made you do that? I I I mean I I love the the portability factor of it. I mean that was the thing that had won me over that I could play portably. I could play it upstairs. I could play it wherever. Um, and then just the fact that like breath. I think Breath of the Wild was big. Um, I was gonna buy it no matter what. Um, I I was just you know ah, I was just over the moon for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like with the Wii, I really wanted to like feel it and and see what it was like. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I I did it. I was so excited for it. I did the midnight launch picked it up. I have a funny story. I was walking out of the store and I told you I was like worried about theft or whatever. I'm walking out of the store. It was like 1230 at night. It was a little bit slow. And I, and I, when I bought it, I didn't buy any games with it because I had pre-ordered all my games at Best Buy because at that time I had GCU. So uh... I got the games for 20% off. So I wasn't buying them at GameStop. And I'm walking out of the store and I'm a little bit nervous. And sure enough, I'm walking to my car and this lady approaches me and she asked me if I have money for gas or something. She said she needed gas. And I was just like, oh, my God. Like, I was all alone. And I'm like, oh, my God, some some dude's going to come out from the bushes and attack me and rob me of my <laughs> switch. And I just told her no. And I was just, like, rushing to my car. There wasn't even a gas station nearby. So this it was a total scam. Yeah. And I got in the car. And, I mean, I just took off. I My, my worst fears almost came about. But But, yeah, so I take off. I go home and I had originally planned to just go to sleep, but I, I there was no way you could sleep. And uh, yeah, I opened the thing up, just like you said, and I, I looked at it and I was like, wow, this is smaller. And and I pick it up. And like you said, it feels, it felt great. I thought it was flimsy. I thought it would be more flimsy. And it really felt great. And it was just magical. I turned it on. It was, I was so excited. I went um, to the e-shop. I bought... Snipper clips, and because I was I was hyped for uh, snipper clips yeah, too, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I bought I am Setsuna, which I was also getting very excited for, and that was like a port, but um, yeah. So I for about like a half hour I played I am Setsuna, and it was just like this great moment. I was sitting on my couch, it's late at night, it was all quiet, and I'm playing this game that has this winter theme, and it looked just gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And after playing 3D, I don't know how 3DS had been out for like five years, I don't know. Yeah. After playing 3DS, that low resolution for so long, um, and I had a Vita, and the Vita resolution was much better, and I hated that I had to play the 3DS in this low resolution. It was like, wow, I can play a Nintendo system, and look how good this screen looks. Because remember, the Wii U, um, the gamepad was really dim, and the Switch just looked amazing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, those were the, the first moments. The next day, yeah, I went out to Best Buy. I got all my games. I got all those... All those yep. Zelda Amiibo came out that day. That's uh, right, yep. I just yeah. a few of them myself, yep. I grabbed the Wii U version of Zelda. Um, I ended up selling that copy to a, to a friend, but then I bought another one. Huh. Um, so I bought, so I, think... I bought two pairs of neon uh, Joy-Cons in that picture, but the, I, one was for somebody else. Um, okay. they, they couldn't find them, so I bought an extra copy. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, and, and the, one of the other big memories was that night we had our first Switch Mob party, and... Um, I wanted everybody to play one, two switch. I was like, we're going to do big one, two switch tournament and whatever. Mm -hmm. Nobody was interested in one, two switch. There was no excitement about 60% of the people at the party were just sitting there playing Zelda on their own. They came to the party, but they were so obsessed with breath of the Mm -hmm. wild. They just did, they didn't play. And we ended up playing Bomberman. Um, Uh, yeah, a lot of people just nothing but play breath of the wild. Nobody was interested in one, two switch. Um, and I remember Michelle had bought, we had one copy of Breath of the Wild. She bought, um, I got it to buy Treasure Trove. I bought it at Shovel Knight. And she was playing that a little bit. But yeah, like the next day, she was just interested in Zelda. And so we bought a second copy. Um, but those are my early memories. Somebody at the party also dropped um, my, one of my Joy-Cons on the concrete floor. I was so pissed off about oh, that. Uh, it was okay. But yeah, I mean, that that's the launch um, so let's kind of go through like this first year, um, just, yeah. you know, give impressions of each game, but 
Um, the first game, I remember, I think I bought all the physical games except for Cars 3 and uh, Skylanders um, when the system came out. Smart choice. Uh, but the, right. The first big release was Mario Kart. And I mean, I think that was in April. Um, I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know um, if there's anything more to say about Mario Kart. I mean, that obviously an incredible port. Still an amazing game. Still, I I, I so, mean, yeah. And the thing that was great. great about Mario Kart was that we were going to be able to play Mario Kart against each other online or mm. in the same room. And uh, for the first time, I mean, we obviously had Mario Kart 7 on 3DS, but this was like the real console version. And, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, our friends, we all got together and we, we tried to play. Actually, this is actually a very interesting memory. We tried to play eight player Mario Kart wirelessly and we actually had a really hard time. It actually kept dropping. We had a really hard time all connecting. Um, we never really got it to work perfectly. We played with like six. Um, yep. That was the first lesson that the wireless really wasn't all that great. Yep. Um, definitely like two or three players. But yeah, if you try to do with eight, it's hard. Um, sometime later, we got into a really tight circle and we're able to play. But huh. if you do play multiplayer Mario Kart, I'm telling you, if you play with like eight, you can play up to 12 people with the local LAN play, which yep. is the right way to play it. Um, it is one of the great experiences. We've done it a few times. We're in a room, a couple people are on a TV, other people on their systems, and everybody's got their sound up, and you just oh, hear yeah. 12 Mario Karts going at That's once. That's cool. It yep. is incredible, and it's still one of the best multiplayer experiences of really the system. Is. Really is. Um, next big game that came out, um, my son and I were so hyped up for ARMS, that was the June game that came out. It was different. It was colorful. And uh, to this day, we still play it from time to time. It, it is one of my, I know, and you, you don't play it, but um, we were so hyped up for it. And the thing I love about ARMS, it's kind of a game, a lot of people don't really like it or whatever. You have to play it for a while and just get better at it. You don't have to be great. Um, but if you play it enough, uh, and 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 I'm I'm advocating playing it with the split Joy Cons, not the Pro Controller. Split Joy Cons, where you actually punch with the motion controls. Mm-hmm. You start to feel like the character on the screen, and the motion controls are done so well. So if you want to like move to the left, you kind of like angle your Joy Cons to the left or angle to the right. Mm-hmm. Um, if you put them together, you'll shield. And it 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 because that motion is so one to one with your character on the screen. I mean, you start like I'll play a game and there'll be like a um, like a screen with like pillars and stuff like and you start like moving around like your whole body, like 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 almost like you're in VR and it just feels so good as you're skulking around and, and hitting and whatever that that's a game you should grab. I mean, you would love to play that. Here's, here's my kids. problem with games like that. And um, I ended up missing Splatoon 2. I love Splatoon 1. I just I kind of missed it. I was late to the game. I was playing something else. I mean, if those, and I hate to say it, because Nintendo is Nintendo, but like, if those games were 30 bucks, I would probably go buy them. Yeah. I, I just, it's hard for me to justify a $60 game that no one else is playing anymore. Yeah. And I know that's, that's not the best reason, but I, I, you know me. I've said it multiple times. I like playing games in the current while other people are playing them so we can talk to each other about them. Um, that's, that's how I enjoy my game and experience. Right. So that okay. you lose that with those, with those type of games if you miss them. Yeah. Yep. And and I mean, that first year had tons of big games and we could go through all of them, but there's no point in talking about it. I mean, yeah. Splatoon 2 came out. Mario Odyssey came out. It was a great I think that was when Xenoblade 2 came out. It did. So, um, so, so two of those games I do want to say, because those are two memories mm-hmm. I do have, is Mario Odyssey and one is I've always loved, loved, loved the 3D Mario games. But there's a moment in Mario Odyssey. And um, if you know what I'm talking about, you may. Yes. When you unlock a special kingdom. The Mushroom Kingdom, um, absolutely, like, every if you played that game and you didn't have the biggest smile on your face, like, I don't <laughs> know what to tell you. And then, of course, you're like, well, shit, I gotta go to the top of the castle to see if anybody's there. And sure enough, who's there, John? Your best pal, Yoshi, right? <laughs> so it's like, it's just such a nostalgia. You're like, this is awesome. It's 3D graphics. And then it's like you're digging deeper into the the, the game, um, 
you know, you find all these little quirks. So that's what that that's what Odyssey did, like these little puzzles and these little other things that missions to do. Um, well, there was just so many moons. I mean, like I remember sometimes it was like drinking from a fire hose. There was like a moon constantly. I know. It, and and I still feel like maybe there was too many moons. But man, yeah. just going through and finding moons was just so fun and relaxing. And it was. Um, yeah, that definitely game. You got to find all the moons. That was a, it was a that was great. Game. But, it, but I, it was definitely one of those games where you, you're. You're, let's say you're going for the coin moon, right? You don't know if you're 100 coins, and you see another moon, you're like, well, shit, I'm at 90 coins. Like, I don't want to go get that moon, but <laughs> I, I, you know, I, it, it, that, and that's always the case, right? But um, amazing, amazing stuff. And then in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, um, absolutely loved the game. December 1st came out, right, 2017. And that, that game, like, took me all the way through Christmas break into the new year of, like, the winter blues. I put well over 100 hours, and I don't know why. I think it was just so different with their battle system and the, and the massive world and the exploration that um, I loved it. And a plus, you got you got you got Pyro and Mithra. Pyro, that's right. That, and uh, that was like one. That was I remember when that game was coming out. People kept thinking it was going to get delayed, and uh, when I, and then it, like they're like, nope, it's not delayed. Nope, it's not delayed. And people just didn't really think that. Wow, this game's going to be done on time, and then it was just so polished and well done. Yeah, it was. And it awesome. was the first really big, you know, RPG on the system with the full voice acting and everything like that. So it kind of like it wasn't as good as Breath of the Wild. Very few games are, but it was such a different experience. There was more story. It was story different. It. it was different. You're right. Yeah. It was just so it was just very different. Uh, definitely a game I might play again. It's a long one, but um. Well, I'm gonna wait. Yeah. I'm gonna wait for the remake of which. Which is that March? Uh, they're thinking maybe May, but uh, yeah, not, no, be. there's no word yet. Right, one, well, me... one other memory. I got to say Mario yeah. Odyssey had a very important memory to me. It came out. It was around November or so. And that year we went to um, we went to Disney World Ooh. and we flew and, and we don't fly that much. We, we, we I think in the last like five years we flew to uh, Disney World. That's it. And uh, I remember bringing it my switch onto the plane and I played and that was like when I was heavy into Mario Odyssey. And mm. man, that that flight, it was like a four hour flight, went by so fast yep. because I was playing my switch. I mean, it was like the I, I don't like to fly, but man, the flight was over. And I was like, oh, my God, like, yep, that was amazing. Like the switch, it makes every flight like you should always have a game that you're ready to, like, sink your teeth into on a flight. And, and Mario I did the same thing with Breath of the Wild. The greatest. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It I is. can't imagine. That's like. That's like being so excited you're flying. You're like, oh, sweet, a five-hour flight. I wish I, it was I eight. did. <laughs> I, I 100% agree with you. And that's the perfect game that it lost in exploration or things like that. I mean, right. but that that's my point of taking it to next level where I, I went on a couple business trips, I remember, that year. And it was right. I was playing the game at home. I literally could go play it in the ta- uh, on the plane. And then I played in my hotel room. It's like, what is better than that? <laughs> you know, it, it's it's awesome. Yeah, but, um, that was very I, good. Keep us going. What's what's next on your timeline? Well, that's good. Do you know what happened December seventh? Uh, and 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 a lot of these memories are going to be personal. Um, December seventh, twenty seventeen, was the Game Awards, and that night uh, I had a school function with the kids, and um, we watched them do a play. And I remember that night very well because I was we were in the theater, and then I went to the car to grab my switch because I was like, this is going to be a long wait. And then when I came back to the theater, they wouldn't let me in. There was this like teenage girl who said, you can't go in. And I said, well, my my family's in there. But when we went in there, we weren't supposed to be in there. And so I had this situation where I could either fight this girl and say, let me in. And I could just be the asshole or Mm -hmm. just not go in because I don't want to be the asshole. So I ended up going in my car and I was like playing some game. I think it was like uh, the parchment. What's that parchments game? Nine parchments. But anyway, my memory is went eventually went into the theater, watched the play, turned my phone off. When I left the theater, my phone blew up with announcements that Bayonetta 3 had oh, been announced <laughs> and that Bayonetta 1 and 2 were coming to the Switch. And Bayonetta 2 is my favorite game of all time. I freaked the fuck out. I was so excited. I told Michelle, I said, you need to drive home. I have to see this trailer. And the Bayonetta <laughs> 3 trailer is another one I've watched like a hundred times. And I, I still can't believe, and this was December of 2017, we have not seen one bit of footage of Bayonetta 3 since then. It's over two years ago. It's killing me. I um, mean, 
I, but I read that story as you had the choice this year to just play or you decided to sit outside to play the Switch and you chose <laughs> the Switch. No, I couldn't get in. I mean, like, I, I wasn't I don't know, John, argue. about you. You're you're blowing off your kids' activities. Oh, no, you're throwing me. Switch birthday parties. No, I mean, nine parchments was not worth that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, that, I, that'll always be the memory to me. Cause I, I just, my, I was just, I, I was like, it's like a shock moment. I was like so excited for Bayonetta three and it came out of nowhere. Um, that was a big, that was a big memory. Um, yep. another big memory for me, January, 2018, I had been looking forward to this game, um, since launch. In fact, I thought the game would come out in launch, but Celeste, um, Celeste had been teased and I actually thought it was going to be a switch launch game for a while. And then the launch came and went and it wasn't around. And I was like, okay, it's going to take a little longer. And that game took, you know, nine months. And January of 2018, I remember I was at work. I was doing some contract work for a company called Deloitte. And the game was finally coming out that day. And I brought my Switch to work, went to work a little early. And I said, during lunch, I am going to play this game. And, and, I, and, and let me reiterate, I was... So hyped up for Celeste for months. I was posting pictures and trailers. I could not wait. The game came out. I downloaded the game at work and lunchtime came. I was so happy, Drew. I took my (laughs) switch. I went over to this little like one of these little casual corners in the office. And I was on a floor that was largely empty except for my team. I don't know why, but there was like empty. And I sat on this little couch and I started I started up Celeste and it just had this beautiful title screen and oh my gosh, it was, it I mean, was, I, I even enjoy the game. It's, it's a great game. It, it was absolutely amazing. I played through the first world and it was like one of those things where you hyped it up so much and it was like, it met every expectation and more. And I could not wait to go home and play. Is, if, if, if for those who have not played it, you really, you really should. It's not a tremendously long game. It's a fairly cheap game. But, um, yeah. Okay. It, it, it's so it's so simple, but it, it's so deep. It, I, I don't, I don't know how to. Dist- it's nothing like any other video game I've ever played. Which is, you know yeah, what I'm saying? You, you think it's going to be like a Super Meat Boy, but then you realize there's a story and there's emotion. I mean, I cried playing that game. It's, 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 it's cool. It's, you you uh, keep wanting to see like what's hap- what's next? What's what's the next level look like? What's the next story development? What's what? Right. It's just you keep asking yourself. Now I wasn't I didn't go for the completionist route. I just kind of played the game and enjoyed it. Um, if I saw some strawberries, or whatnot, I I get them, but it wasn't. I didn't go yeah. back. I, I was just enjoying the game for what it was. I I didn't hundred percent it. I still play it. Um, I'm still working on the farewell DLC. It's really hard. Um, but I do want to eventually get all the strawberries. But yeah, it's a it's a tough game. I, I that's but oh man, it's so much fun. Um, next great moment, March eighth, twenty eighteen. I think that this is my favorite surprise reveal of all time. Um, this is the Smash Brothers reveal. Do you remember how Smash Brothers was revealed to the world, Drew? Um, are, are we, I, I, I might, are we talking about the, the, the Splatoon thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Everyone was, yeah. It, it was, I, uh, the reflection. I, I get the feeling, Drew, like these moments don't have the same impact on you as they do for me. Uh, <laughs> I re, I mean, I remember they had just talked about Splatoon for a while. And yeah, I, I, re, I, re, I remember this moment, right? Yeah. I, I remember watching it and I was just like, okay. Cool, Smash. Kind of knew that was coming. Like, <laughs> like, but I mean, maybe I didn't know it was coming in that video. But I mean, it would have been silly. I mean, you knew it was coming to the Switch. Well, right. Yes. But I mean, you still, know? like coming at that moment, um, the way they revealed it, because they had just talked about. I can't remember what they were talking about, but they had just talked about Splatoon for like ten minutes, and then they were like, "Oh, one more thing," and you're like all hyped up. And this was back when they started doing the one more thing. They didn't always do that. Correct. And then they showed this Splatoon and they were it, showing like it was like older footage, you know, of like the original Splatoon yeah. and all that jazz. But, but and, uh, I think, and, and Switch marketing team has really stepped up their game with their their these these character videos, right? Like the the, the Pixar like animation and stuff like that. I mean, ever since the Switch, I mean, it's phenomenal. So I I agree that gets me excited when I see that. I mean, I think Luigi's Mansion is the perfect example of the amazing art that it did. Right. But um. Seeing these videos now, you're right. It gets you excited. Um, but I don't know. I, for me, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I played 
I played Smash. I, I played and beat the entire story mode and everything. But um, and we, we had some tournaments, some competitions, all that type of stuff. But yeah, after that, it was it was just eh, whatever. yeah, whatever. You know, I don't but know. That, that's just me. It's Smash. It, it's I'm not a diehard Smash player. No, but it, to me, it was about that trailer at that moment, kind of hitting, and it's like when. We, you know, this system that we all had and loved or whatever, but a lot of people still held on to their GameCubes and we used to play Smash. And now it was coming to the system that you were playing the rest of the day. Um, and the way they revealed it, because it was like, oh, this is just another Splatoon thing. And then you see the reflection in the eye. And then they and then the great part about that trailer was how little information they gave. They showed some, you know, slight silhouettes. You can see it was the new link. You could mm-hmm. see it was kind of the new Mario. You didn't really see Cappy, but I think we all kind of thought it's the new Mario. Yep. And then I remember the amount of analysis that went into that trailer because we did <laughs> not know yep. if it was a port because there had been several ports or it was a new smash. And that went on, if you remember, for months before we got more information. What's it going to be? So yep. I think... Uh, one of the things that, that really, like, I mean, that might be the highlight of Smash was that trailer. And I, I love that. I, I still to this day, go look at, like, Smash, the Super Smash Brother reveal reaction videos, especially the one at Nintendo World Store. Um, they are the best because the people who, um, I think the people who play Smash the most are the ones who do the reveal videos. And so they yep. tend to be very bombastic. That That's a good time. Watch the reaction videos for that one. Um, definitely, definitely good. Um, no, I agree. Speaking of reveals, um, another one, this one might fly under the radar for some people, but, um, I, I had heard of Ori in the Blind Forest and, um, I knew I wanted to play it. I, you know, I, I always knew there was two games on Xbox that one that I wanted to play Ori in the Blind Forest and Cuphead. And I knew a lot about Cuphead. I did not know a lot about Ori in the Blind Forest, but I knew I wanted to play and I remember there were some rumors about it coming out. So in August uh, in 2019, um, they did the Indie Direct. And um, at the very end, they did a one last thing for Ori in the Blind Forest. And they started showing the game. And the funny memory I have of this is that I didn't recognize what the game was. I was watching it with Michelle and I was like, what is this? And there was some good music going on, but I didn't know what it was. And I remember thinking to myself, what is this weird thing? I, I thought it was just some weird indie game because that's what they were showing for the whole yeah, 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 yeah. for the whole thing. And and uh, and all of a sudden, there's this moment about like 30 seconds in where the the music, the classic Ori, and the I don't know if you've played Ori in the Blind Forest. I have not. Uh, okay, the classic Ori music kicks in, and they uh, on the left side they bring in the title and it says Ori in the Blind Forest. And the combination of the, the reveal of the title, which most people knew what it was, I did not. Yeah. And the music was just like total goosebumps at that very moment. And I was just like in my chair, I was like, oh, or it's coming. Like I was so excited. <laughs> and it was just funny because I didn't know what the game looked like. I just never put a lot of thought into it. It was so much fun. Yeah. Um, I'll always remember that. I still watch that version of the trailer. In fact, I linked you that trailer earlier. Um, did. I still watch that. I love that moment. And 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 then if you, I mean, you got to play Ori in the Blind Forest at some point, Drew. I mean, it's it really it really lives up to the hype. It's one of the great games. And uh, then you'll appreciate that trailer even more. Is it better than Pine? Uh, it's a lot better than Pine. I haven't played Pine, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, then. Um, you know, the Into the Beach, the Into the Breach uh, trailer, which came out um, just, I think, like a week later. Um, that was another really cool reveal. I had a friend who said it was just one of his favorite games ever. And I didn't know what it was at all. And then they kind of did it as a one last thing reveal a week later. And I, I wasn't blown away by it, but I was really happy for my friend. But since then, I've played that game so much and I regard it as one of my top five games of all time. Um, it's, a, it's a great game. I'm yeah. um, not as great, uh, not a great, uh, not as great as trailer, um, but I I remember that one. Um, another big one for me, and this goes to my wife, who's a huge Animal Crossing fan. We, you know, a- as Switch fans, we all were like, "Where is Animal Crossing?" And finally, and it was a September of 2018, they revealed the thing, and my gosh, I remember texting my wife. And I was like, Animal Crossing is coming, you know? And she was so excited. 
yeah. then she came home and she watched the trailer. They did a. Do you remember what they did before they revealed Animal Crossing? Like oh. how they did. There was an announcement that happened right before they revealed Animal Crossing, which is kind of links in with the memory of the reveal. With the the, the Smash thing? Yes, that's what yeah, the, the Isabel letter got invited yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah, Smash. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So which and was I kind remember of confusing, when confusing, right? Yeah. Like, oh, what, what's happening here? Is this a new game? Or they just did they just do this for Isabel? Yeah, uh, yeah, but I and, and it was a big part of I mean of all the Smash reveals when they like. Well, they would reveal like Banjo and Kazooie and they revealed King K. Rule. They did a lot of like faking out the audience. And this was one of them, because when when Animal Crossing comes on the screen and you see Isabel, everyone's like, oh, my God, Animal Crossing. If you watch reaction videos, people are just going out of their minds because they think it's Animal Crossing. Yeah. And then she says, oh, I'm in Smash. And there's this level of disappointment from people yeah. like, oh, like, oh, it's just Smash. And I remember watching it thinking, whoa, whoa, they better announce Animal Crossing right now because people are going to be freaking, people were mad already. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Tom Nook comes out and it's like, yes, he's going to do it, he's going to do it. And it really was kind of a very quiet moment where he just fades out and then yeah. it fades in. Um, that was a fun reveal in the way they did that. It, it was almost like very little hype or whatever. Mm -hmm. But man, that was um, that was a good reveal. So, I mean, there's just a lot of these little personal moments. I think we all have those personal moments um, about the Switch. It's not just about the big releases or, you know, anything like that. It's just the yeah. little moments that I think um, have made the last three years really fun. Um, all the parties we've had and just the little reveals. And Nintendo, like you said, Nintendo has gotten really good at their marketing, mm -hmm. their reveals, the Nintendo shoes that were at the van store ice cream just announced a partnership with like what levi's uh yeah. so they're like nintendo clothes now um i think that's what's made the switch era so much fun um and even like uh remember when they revealed ring fit and they did that 10 minute video and nobody had any idea what ring fit was um and then it turned out that that game was really great so um just so many little moments um, and I, do you have any other moments, Drew? Well, I mean, for me, I think I think overall one moment would be is I think my kids are obviously a little bit younger than yours, right? Um, three and six. So I, I think my kids have now are old enough. They're growing up with the Switch as the console that they're really understanding video game. And so I, I have a lot of moments where I got to physically play video games with them for kind of like the first time. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, right, my son was yeah. barely even born, so... I mean, we started off with we've really only dug in deep into two games. Um, and the first one that we have a lot of memories were uh, Mario Party. And we we played the raft mode only because it's a lot easier than mini games. Right. And um, my daughter could latch on to that. But it was so cool to, like, see her and how excited she got when, you know, we get like an S rank or even an A rank or whatever. And she actually did stuff. You know, so like she, right. just watching that excitement in my kids of of passion, that's of mine. It's like, oh, that's that's awesome. So the motion, was, the motion controls really connect with kids a lot more than than the hardened adults. So I love the motion, but it's a great yeah, start, like kids right? Love it. Yeah, it was a great start for her to get that. There's a couple of mini games. You have to use the Joy-Con a little bit to walk around. So it was a good introduction of Joy-Cons and pushing a button mm -hmm. versus and then and then graduating into a little bit of Joy-Con type, um, you know, different mini games and then more recently we've been playing mario kart with the assist mode on and now she's really starting to understand the joy con uh i mean the joy stick concept where once she gets it down that we can maybe take off the assist mode and see uh how that goes so yeah i mean that for me is a huge moment of of seeing that you know a uh, little secret drew i still play with the assist mode on no, you don't. Um, I don't. No, I do. I, I I don't need it most times, but I actually race really well with it. Very, very rarely does it engage. Um, but um, I'm a yeah, pretty good about, Mario Kart racer. But what about when you're trying to get like a certain shortcut or, or something like that? No, uh, no. It will it, steer you off of it, though. Yeah, uh, I, I it depends. But it, it does come in handy a lot. I can put in some pretty good times with it. Um. I but that's I, where you're I, struggling, John. I think that's I know. I I consider myself a really good Mario Kart racer, but I always make these dumb mistakes while I race. So the um it, it the auto steer actually helps me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wanted to share just some. I we asked uh, our listeners kind of like what were their kind of favorite moments that yep. they remember. 
And I wanted to make sure that I share these off because uh, they took the time to write it. But um, first one is from Cat Janitor. And he says, I'll be the first to say, not for the first time or the last, Breath of the Wild is a fucking masterpiece. I got my Switch at midnight and meant to just fire it up and go to bed after. But nope. Zelda kept me up all night, if you know what I mean. For real, though, from the moment you leave the cave to the final battle with Calamity Ganon, that game is positively engrossing. Um, obviously, can't agree anymore. I mean, that, that the game is just absolutely amazing. And um, the way that game starts up so kind of easily and quietly and, oh, my God, just like talking to the guy with the apple right in the beginning. Um, yeah, I think most of us, Breath of the Wild is just completely tied to the magic of the Switch when we first started. It is, 100%. And that's the key to any console, right? If you have in that launch game along with it. Yeah. Uh, and I think Nintendo learned a lesson. I think future systems will have incredible launch titles. I don't think yep. the days of starting off with like a bad library like the Wii U had, um, mm -hmm. I think those days are dead. I think Nintendo's going to have a big release. Yep. Um, uh, next one is from uh, Third Strongest Mole, and um, he has a comment close to my heart here. This mostly, uh, and, 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 and he attaches a picture of the reflection of the smash ball in uh, Inkling Girl's eye, like we talked about the smash mm -hmm. reveal. Um, so this mostly. Also, ARMS uh, may not be on the level of Splatoon, but I love when Nintendo just up and delivers something I never knew I wanted. Um, totally, I mean, totally agree. I mean, I think ARMS is the personification of why we love Nintendo, even if we don't all love ARMS. But mm -hmm. just that they will throw things at you. Ring Fit, Wii Sports, Arms. They're just they're always throwing things at you yeah, that absolutely. are you know goofy and motion controls. Um, even if they're not always a hit, even if like it's a virtual boy, um, mm -hmm. they always do it. This one is from uh, Crazy Greek Dre. Is that how we pronounce it? Crazy Greek Dre. I, like I think so. Doctor Crazy Greek Dre. Uh, <laughs> here's his memories. I remember watching the trailer the previous year. I think it was November, October. Um, watching the trailer, I couldn't wait to play Zelda. Uh, following up the trailer in January when they actually had the, lo the long presentation of what the Switch can do, and that was the one in January. Mm -hmm. um, price point, etc. I immediately pre-ordered mine. Up until that point, my favorite game of all time was a tie between Super Mario 3 and Ocarina of Time. When I put Zelda in for the first time and entered into the world from the resurrection place, I couldn't believe what I was looking at. 250 hours later, oh boy. Oof, that was my favorite game to this point in my life. I slowly played it over a five to six month period. Slowly? <laughs> I mean, helped... that's still a lot of hours. Oh, I know. <laughs> and like, I remember all of us were just engrossed in that. Uh, this game helped me stay up with a newborn under the age of one. To this day, other than Octopath Traveler, it was the only game that I would play consistently every time until my battery died. Masterpiece. Oh, I've um, heard somebody else speak so highly of Octopath Traveler. <laughs> <laughs> I love Octopath Traveler. That's a good game. Um, uh, the last one here, X Long X um, wrote, uh, I was, <laughs> X Long X. <laughs> I was a little late to buying the Switch, and of course I bought it for Zelda. However, two moments really stick out to me. Um, first playing New Donk City on Odyssey, and I think this is what you were talking about earlier, Drew. Uh -huh. That level was amazing, and I was in awe. Second, I had zero expectations because of graphics, but when you get to the hotel in Celeste, mm. that was an amazing moment. That game was amazing as well. Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. I think, um, I think you pretty much nailed it. Yeah. So um, I think we, we went through a lot here, Drew. Hopefully everyone's uh, kind of stayed up late with us on this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, but I do want to talk about something, John. And I want to talk about what we have going on right now. The Battle of the Ages. Good versus <laughs> evil. Drunicorns versus Team Luigi Death Stare, whatever the hell your name is. Oh, um, I thought you were going to talk about Bernie versus Biden. Okay. Oh, gotcha. yeah. Well, no, that's a different time. Anyways, I'm talking about Monthly Mayhem. And we are having an amazing battle going on. We've had the most people we've ever had signed up. I think we have 26 people. Crazy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if you want in on this action, you have to head over to the Nintendo Dads podcast and subscribe to them on the Patreon to help get involved in this. But um, what's going on? I believe the Team Drunicorns is kicking your ass, John. <laughs> I mean, to put it simple. You know, we, like, I, we've got some teammates. I think they're waiting for the end. Um, but we have some pretty good scores. You guys have put some crazy scores. I I spent some time trying to, to top the, the Koopa Beach score, 
And I was so proud when I nailed it. I watched a video online. I was all yeah. ready to go, chose Bowser and all that. And then it turned out somebody had already beaten the time. And then you went and beat my time. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was a disappointing. I, but I'll be I'm happy with third right now. Um, I definitely <laughs> feel like Mario Kart is really hard. I didn't realize it is, it is Mario Kart 8 has such perfect mechanics. Mario Kart's just all over the fucking place. Uh, it's just mm. random. But we're know, allowed to use the rewind feature. So I want to call people out, though, because people have been posting pictures differently. And when <laughs> you take a screenshot of the end of a race, it doesn't show what CC you were using. You yeah. need to do it on your ghost screen. Because for all I know, you did 200 CC where you could improve your time by like 10 seconds. Right. So... This cheater shit's not going to happen on my watch. All right? <laughs> Team Drew Jones is here for real. And I want those people to prove that it was 150cc. <laughs> um, but anyways, be sure you guys join in for Monthly Mayhem. Uh, it's it. It's it's coming to an end. There's 10 days left. March 13th is the deadline. We're not Oof. having another podcast before that. Next podcast, we're going to be talking about the winners and how I kicked John's ass and announcing who wins the money. And that's what's going to happen. So... Now is the time. No more of this bullshit of waiting to submit your scores. Submit them. What, what are we waiting for? I want them submitted so we can go back and battle back and forth. Mole and I had an epic battle for the ages the other night where we literally posted one after another for two hours straight of times that we were beating each other by like 0. 0.2 seconds. It was incredible. <laughs> I want that for the next 10 days. So people need to start posting now. Um and then we can talk about the winners and all the fun about Mario Kart next uh, next episode. Oh, it should be. Uh, well, our special be episode. But yeah. um, anything else before we start to wrap this up? You know? No, just I mean, just to finish up mayhem. I, I'm having trouble getting my times any better, but uh, I'm I, I don't feel bad at my scores. But I am confident in my team that once everyone has given it their all, uh, we will be supreme. That sounds like something a loser would say. But anyway, we want to thank the Nintendo Dads for letting us be part of their Nintendo Dads family of podcasts, right? Um, you can find us by subscribing to the Dads After Dark Show podcast and all of your favorite podcast apps and feeds. Um, and if you're a Nintendo Dads patron, come hang out with us over in the Dads After Dark channel on Discord. Um, and let us know what we should talk about next. We, we love all the feedback from you guys. Also, you can now follow us on Twitter, which we've kind of been around for, at the end dads after dark just the letter n dads after dark and john been a this week well, <laughs> you noticed we got our 69th follower this week 69th follower and you know who it was it was it, cat janitor i mean who better to 69 than cat janitor <laughs> um so thanks buddy um and, and 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 check those guys over out at dad's cross they're doing some amazing things with animal cross and god bless you guys you guys are gonna be talking about animal cross and every week God bless you. I don't know what else to say, uh, but but I I gotta I, say I had a really yeah. good time watching uh, watching Don's live stream on there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, but also make sure you can always send us an, uh, a question or anything like that to our email as well, which is dadsafterdark at nintendodads dot org. Um, remember, monthly mayhem ends March thirteenth. Get those times in, and John, give us a quick recap of what we're going on the next couple of weeks. Wow, wow, wow! So, uh, yeah, every time we do these show notes, I always say Nintendo Direct. Uh, there is no Nintendo Direct. Mm -hmm. um, one quick announcement: Wonderful One Hundred One is now on sale at Best Buy. Oddly, um, so if you don't want to do the Kickstarter for whatever reason, um, just go buy it at Best Buy, especially if you still have that GCU. Um, so you get that 20% off. I don't know when the last day of GCU is, but um, there's still a few people that have it. Um, so definitely uh, take a look at that one. Um, Murder by Numbers is coming out March 5th. That's the next big release. That's in a couple of days. I don't, um, I don't that know is what the, that is. Yeah, it's it's kind of one of those like smaller games, but it's uh, it's like P-Cross mixed with um, uh, Phoenix Wright. So uh, when you solve the P-Cross puzzles... You're actually doing it as part of solving like a crime case. And um, the guy who did the music for Animal uh, Animal Crossing uh, for Phoenix Wright, the Ace Attorney games, um, does the music in this one. So, I mean, I don't know if it looks like the greatest game that you'll ever play. But if you really I like mean, P-Cross and you want to wrap it up in a story. Sounds um, terrible. Yep, definitely one to look for. I do like P-Cross. 
Um, I might push this up down cross. the road, but the pit what? cross or pit cross? I don't know. I well, pit cross, pit cross, whatever. Pit um, cross sounds dirty. Yeah, maybe it is. Um, but this is an interesting one, so uh, keep an eye out for it. And then, um, yeah, March 6th is the next big release. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue mm. Team DX. That's Friday. So um, I know a lot of people are excited about that one. There is a demo um, you can grab. Uh, but yeah, that game's coming out really soon. Looks really nice. I love the art style on that one. And uh, yeah, I mean, and shortly after we record next, we know what game is coming out. But uh um, the drought is almost over, folks. Animal and Crossing. What drought you're referring to? Uh, everyone's got their own different drought, but uh, yeah, it's been a while since um, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, and even even then, a lot of people have not had a big game released this year yet. But March 20th will be the first one for a lot of people, so very excited for that. But um, but not yet. We're, we we got another episode before then. We do. I, I'm still Pokemon less. I, I've I, well, that's not true. Here's a. I've I played one Pokemon game in my life. Any venture on guess? It, not the new one, right? No. Nope. Uh, I want to say Pokemon Pearl. No, Pokemon Battle Revolution. What? And you want to know why and what the significance of that game is, John? I have no idea. That is the first ever. It was on the Wii. It was the first ever Nintendo game that introduced online play. Oh, I So see. I was I super excited, and I didn't give a shit what the game was. I was like, I want to play online with people. That sounds cool. It's 2007. You know, yeah, let's try this. Uh, did it go well? I asked you it a couple times, and I returned it. Wow. So that's it? That's all you've played in Pokemon? That's it. That's, a, that's you your fun fact of the day. Give it a go. No, I, I, the new I one, like the I idea. Think but... Really good. Try Mystery Dungeon. I mean, it's not like the classic Pokemon games. Maybe you'll like that. I don't know. Maybe not. But anyways, guys, everyone, thank you so much for listening to us. Um, and, and that is it. We want to thank uh, the Nintendo Dads once again. And tune in to Monthly Mayhem next week. And uh, also our, well, in two weeks, in our, in our next show coming out in two weeks. But that's it, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Dads After Start Show. Peace. Hi, Dad. <laughs>